You're gonna love nostalgia. Hello everyone, Rick here and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and possibly something that may start a new playlist on this channel where I take a look at computer software gubbins and things. Um, over the past year and a bit I've been taking a look at some very interesting uh, like indie projects, uh, even just like little, little silly little programs, novelty, novelty programs and uh, little desktop toy programs, gadgets and one of the, uh, the, like the program we're exploring today, desktop enhancement software. Now, if you're not familiar with this sort of genre of uh, computer software, it's effectively a set of programs that are used in some way to change up, remove features, or uh, replace uh, features on your desktop. They're available, for, you can get them for like Linux, you can get them for Windows, you can get them for Mac OS. This program is going to be a Windows uh, sort of enhancement software sort of thing. Um, this program replaces your taskbar in Windows. Something very nostalgic, which is fitting because this <laughs> this T-shirt is kind of fitting for that reason, but it's also fitting because this tool actually replaces your taskbar to a more older version of Windows. So think think of pre-Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP, Windows 2000, Windows 98, Windows 95. This is what this program does. I'm going to change the screen over to my virtual machine. This is actually a very, this is actually a custom ISO that I'm using. It's a very lightweight, very tr a, 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 a sort of empty a copy of Windows, as you can see in the, in the start menu right here. It's a very empty version of Windows. Uh, just just for, for safety reasons and possibly to save my own back, uh, I'm not going to mention where I got this from, for those who might be interested, for the sole reason that I got this on one of those interesting websites. And just just for those reasons, I don't know if this has actually got in anything on it that might be worrying. It's, it seems from the outset that it's empty, but I don't tr completely trust it. It's got Windows Defender and stuff installed, um, but as I say, I'm not really. I don't really trust that this is completely okay. So I'd rather just not have a, a recommend this to people, and then then I cause them to have viruses. I know for a fact that the program I'm about to showcase does not have any viruses because I've used it more than once. But we're taking a look at this little program today called RetroBar, and this is it right here. Uh, I'm just going to double click on the icon and we'll take a look at what, what RetroBar does. And this is RetroBar running. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you can see, it's literally just, you know, sort of like switched out the, the standard Windows is Windows 10 taskbar to something that looks a little bit more like it's from Windows 95. It's actually very functional as well. You can see you've got the icons and stuff down here. You've got the VMware Tools icon. You've got network access. You've got volume and stuff. These are actually working icons. And I've actually clicked on the clock right here. It brings up the, the clock tool um, within Windows itself and the start button brings up the start menu. Now if you want this to be more authentic, if you want to try and go for a, a retro Windows vibe, there is software out there that is used to replace the start menu. I will probably take a look at them, look at them later. There's uh, things called Classic Shell. It's now called Open Shell as far as I believe. Um, and there's other things you can do it as well. There's other things like change the way the uh, window, windows look and stuff. Um, and I might actually make a video about this later on where I literally just transform, maybe take a virtual machine like this and transform it to look like, I don't know, Windows 2000 or something. We'll see about that when we get there. But um, yeah, so here we are. I'm just going to be take, taking a little bit of a showcase around what RetroBar does besides this. Um, I do want to clarify for those who want to install this, there are dependencies this requires, which can be downloaded from the Microsoft website. It, it's, it mostly just needs like what's referred to as the .NET desktop runtime, I think it is, which is fine. It, within the EXE, when you, when you double click on the, on the first time, if you don't have it installed, it will install it for you. But if you have a bunch of different programs installed, like other games and whatever, that sort of stuff installed, there's a high chance you might already have what it requires installed anyways, if you have a very fully fully blown up machine with different programs as such. But, as I say, this is RetroBar, if you right click on the taskbar actually, you can also right, right click on the actual icons themselves and you get the same menus you see on the standard taskbar. So for instance, about VMware tools and stuff, if I right click on this, you've got access to the task manager, just like the standard taskbar and even the classic taskbar in older versions of Windows. And again, there's there's tools and stuff available if you want to replace a task task manager to the, an older version of it. That's possible as well. Um, but there's also things like lock the taskbar. We can kind of see right here. Um, you can sort of like adjust things right here. And what you can also do, like in the, like an older version of it as well, you can actually drag the taskbar anywhere around the screen. Do whatever you like with that sort of uh, sort of thing. You can also lock it down, which makes makes it so you can actually move it, of course. Um, as far as like where you can actually resize it, yep. 
It's funny because it's very restricted in how far you can actually pull it up, but it does actually move everything on the desktop, which is interesting. One thing you can also do, you can also close out of it. If you want to bring back the, the facet uh, uh, Windows taskbar, there is some bugs in this still. There's sometimes where it has issues with certain uh, sort of no notification icons. Like I have noticed when I'm trying to use a Discord, for instance, the Discord icon just becomes like read only sort of thing. I can't right click on it or anything. That that's fine. No, it doesn't really. Uh, 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 it's not really too bad for me anyways, I can just click on the icon and bring it back on anyways, so uh, whatever. And hitting properties, and we'll take a look at uh, these properties. Um, the first time I actually came across this program was actually uh, by a YouTuber by the name of Michael, Michael K GKD, I think his name is. Um, I, think, I think it's his name, I can't remember his full name, but he did a video on this way back when. This program has actually been updated since then with a lot of new um features and stuff and um, for instance it's got new themes so currently right now you can see it's just the classic sort of yeah windows 95 windows 98 taskbar i can change this to look more windows 2000 which is a slightly more just adjusted look things like the language and stuff and location so you can set where the location is most people just have it at the bottom anyways there's also stuff like longhorn arrow and i'll, I'll show it what windows me looks like it's just a little bit different as well still System XP, which brings the uh, Windows XP logo in there, and it's also got Windows XP themes. So you've got the classic Windows XP, a uh, classic blue. You've also got the classic style, but we'll showcase what blue does. The Windows XP taskbar. It's so freaking beautiful. All this needs now is the blissful paper, and we'd be good to go. Um, but if I lock this down, this actually looks more like the part, of course. Um, and if you go down further, there's the embedded style, which is from like a, a, a Windows XP, uh, like Windows POS Ready 2009, which is that um, that embedded version of Windows. And this is what that looks like. Very, very dark blue. I actually kind of like this style, to be fair. I actually kind of use this um, sometimes. But we've got olive green, which is a classic Windows XP theme as well. And we've got the silver, also very, <laughs> very classic. Uh, the Zune style, which has a sort of like glossy look to it. Speaking of glossy look, it's also got the Royal style, which is effectively just Windows XP, but more modernised, because this is around the time that Windows Vista was around anyways. This is for Windows XP Media Center edition. You could also get this installed if you had the Windows, uh, uh, the Windows version of Microsoft Plus. Uh, which was a plus pack. Um, plus packs were just like a you know a little a little box of like software enhancements you can add to your desktop as well. But you can get that for that as well. But um, you've also got Raw Noir, which is just sort of a very darker, a much a much darker tone version of the of the taskbar. Almost almost to the point is black. But when you hover over the start button, it has a classic green color to it. Um, so you've got the menu style. You've got Vista style. I'm not I'm not showing you the bait the uh, Vista stuff yet. This is a Visa taskbar, and I'm not too sure what's the difference between basic and Aero in this in this way. Um, I assumed that to a certain extent, yeah, I can actually see it now. I can actually see the difference now. So if I go to basic, this is basic. And if I go to Aero, I'm not actually too sure if this if if a uh, Aero basic actually takes on the color of your of your uh, actual like Windows settings. Um. But I'll just give a second. I'm going to start and actually see this. I don't actually think this is actually the case because I've never actually got this to work properly. But no, it doesn't doesn't really seem to like change too much, which is kind of a shame. I would love it if it it, it would uh, like adjust to the actual appearance of the, the settings that you use on the Windows desktop itself. There are some modifications to this program which make it a little bit different and kind of take away the sense of disbelief about it, about it a little bit. For instance, there is this show desktop button in the corner, which this is sort of like how it does it in Windows 7 to be fair, but this is the Windows Visa taskbar. I'll show you how this looks uh, in other versions of the taskbar right here. So we'll put it back onto Windows XP Blue. So you've got this little desktop show a desktop icon in the corner right here instead of the actual sort of uh, toolbar uh, button. That's there and I'll show you what it looks like. You've got the arrow look and you also have the Windows 95 look. So there we go. Very, very nifty little thing. And a fun fact for you, actually, I learned, I found this out quite recently, but apparently there was actually something similar to this feature. Beta versions of Windows 95 when they were still developing it sort of thing. There was apparently going to be a feature. I think in Windows 98 as well, there's actually going to be a little show, show, show desktop button embedded in the taskbar. And it took them an extra 10 years before they said to do that. In Windows 7 even. Yeah, there we go. We're already up to, up to a very good start. And if you want to make it a bit more authentic to the original taskbar, you can do that. I will get to, in just a bit, a little sort of like tutorial on how, how to bring the classic toolbar back. It's actually very easy. But then 
and you've got, as I say, you've got the quick launch option is empty, but you can adjust this. I'll show you how to do this in just a bit, as I say. Something a bit more modern, you can add show window previews, which of course does, as I say right here, so you can actually see if you hover over windows and stuff, it actually shows preview of the running window. So it's kind of jarring if you, if, when you're seeing the Windows XP taskbar with a Windows 7 feature. <laughs> it's nice that way, and you also got things like allow font smoothing, which is sort of like clear type. So I can adjust that, so I set that on. You can't really seem to notice too much right now, but if I go into the advanced tab and we'll see what happens there, also collapse notification area. It doesn't animate like the Windows XP taskbar, there's a little sort of like little sort of z z animation that happens in Windows X XP when this happens. It's just static. It doesn't really bother me that much, it's, it, it exists as a thing. Input language. <laughs> I love this so much. But if you go to advanced, there's a, the, there's a button right here, make sure to put RetroBar in a folder. If you want to keep it on, on your desktop for whatever reason, you can do that, but make sure to put RetroBar in a location where Windows can call back to it later. So maybe put it in like maybe your documents folder, for instance, or something where it could just sit there and just do its own thing. Because if you set this and then move this into a folder, it's going to break. It, it just won't run because it won't be able to find its program's location. And this is basically my experience. It could be fixed by, by the time this video comes out. But you can set this and whenever you log into your computer, RetroBar will start. So you'll completely, you'll, every time you log into Windows at this point, you'll always see, for in my case, the Windows XP taskbar. <laughs> Use software rendering, which, yeah, that kind of removes the uh, the shadow a little bit. Yeah, not really sure I want to do that. Uh, if you have multiple taskbars, if you, if you have multiple desktops even, if you have a, a multiple monitor sort of set up, you can set this on and you can actually have the taskbar on all displays. I will note, however, uh, at least in this current version that I'm running right now, if you set this, the start button will only appear in one on, on your main desktop. So whatever you set as your main as your main monitor, the start button will appear on that uh, on on that screen. It's not like in uh, the Windows 10 taskbar, for instance. If you set that, if if you have like multiple multiple taskbars across your, your setup, you've got a start button in all of your screens. No, it just has it on one screen on the on retro bar, which can be a bit of annoying if you're if a little bit tedious. If you're on like one screen, but the start button's on this screen, and you're trying to like do 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 do, it can be a little bit awkward. But I just want to note that down for for you guys. You can also set like how programs are shown. So, for instance, same taskbar as window, which does as it as it does. So, if you have one window and one screen, the, the taskbar button will appear for that screen. And that screen only, but you can also set it for a uh, same taskbar as window and primary taskbar. That, that just does what it does. You can also adjust the scaling. So if you're a little bit reading impaired, or you just want to be a little bit silly, you can make it bigger. And that's how big it can get. <laughs> so this is effectively tablet friendly at this point, but I'll, I'll keep it more normal size for now. But there we go, that is basically that for that. And then um, invert icons. So what does this do again? Ah, yeah, that, it does that, right. There's also mods I might take a look at in the future, which allows you to change the way icons and stuff work. So we can actually get this a bit more authentic to like Windows 2000 or Windows XP or something like that. We'll see about that when we get there, as I say. But one thing I was want to show though, is to make this a bit more authentic, um, hang on. So I'm just going to disable, unlock the taskbar. So you know how I'm talking about this uh, show desktop button, right? The quick launch menu is still a thing. Um, Show badges, hang on, where's the uh, show desktop? Where's the show desktop button? Right, there we go. So I'm going to disable that. And I'm going to demonstrate a way to get this a bit more authentic to the Windows, the, the original like, Windows XP look, or even Windows, you know, to classic look. So you see right here where it says show quick launch. You can actually select that location. And uh, in theory, if I do that, do it that way, yep. So we're going to, right, I'm just going to slow this down actually. So we're going to, so from your personal folder, you go to App Data, Roaming, Microsoft, Internet Explorer, <laughs> and Quick Launch. And in most cases, if it works right, aha. So there we go, this is the Quick Launch folder. And I'm sure what that actually looks like, if I can actually locate where my folder actually is. So if I go to App Data, if I go to Roaming, Microsoft, and Internet Explorer, Quick Launch. Yeah, here is a, uh, for right here. There's a switch windows button which I've tried to use that and it doesn't seem to actually work but the, the show desktop button works. Well, best way to demonstrate it. There we go. It does actually work and you've got the icon for Microsoft Edge which you can replace. You can replace the icon for Microsoft Edge if you if you use Edge that is. I do, I do know there are some people out there who just like 
Uh, Edge is a new explorer. Let's just use Chrome. Um, but I don't really bother too much with that with Microsoft Edge. I just think it's it's fine for what it does. Um, but yeah, you can launch it, Microsoft Edge from there, and it works. But I've not actually demonstrated yet how to actually get Retro Bar. So you can actually just get it. I will leave a link to it in the description down below. But I've just gone to my history and look it for that way. But it's in GitHub and just forgive the way this looks. I'm actually using an older version of Edge. So this is why it's a little bit sort of broken. The Retro Bar page. So Dremen Retro Bar. And you go into Releases. And the newest release is 1.17. As I say, by the time this video comes out, there'll probably be new updates available for this. And then you just, for me, I just hit 64 bit. I will note, there is a slight uh, difference in the way Windows 10 works and the way Windows 11 works when it comes to the taskbar. You may have to, like, in some cases, manually hide your Windows uh, uh, Windows 11 taskbar to get this to show right, because there is a sort of, like, bug, as far as I'm aware, with, with the Windows 11 taskbar, because 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 of the way that taskbar uh, works compared to the Windows uh, 10 taskbar, it makes things a little bit awkward to actually mess around with. As I say, it's not too bad to deal with, but there we go. That is effectively retro bar, and just for point's sake, I am going to make this look like um, this. I need to do this. There we go. <laughs> and yep, that is basically the Windows XP desktop. <laughs> I mean, if I'm just the, the the icons, it would probably look more of the part, as I say. But yeah, it it it, it works for what it what it is. And I will probably, as I say, make a video in the future where I just, you know, off the mark, just take take a virtual machine and just transform it to look like Windows 2000 or something. We'll see about that down the line. If you want to see that though, you have to uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so I can actually catch that video if I ever make it. And also, I will be planning to make future videos on this sort of software. I do plan to do something which brings back some additional classic Windows features. That will be something for the future though. Some like old Windows games, for instance. Some other features that I won't get into. That's a, sp a spoiler for, for a future video. So if you're interested in seeing future videos in this series about this sort of stuff, well, you'll have to, of course, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. And if you enjoyed this, like this video. I'd love, uh, love the engagement a little bit. It would help the, help the video up in the algorithm a little bit. And uh, comment down below if you want to see some other other sort of software you want, you want to see explored um, if you want that sort of thing but guys that's going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed it as i say and uh, until next time stay safe take care and i'll see you for the next video bye now